Hi, Christopher. Love it. This is the second of two dialogues that we're taping consecutively, which will explain why some of our, our clothing may seem familiar, at least in my case, to people. Uh, the the um, and I think uh, we, sh- you know, it's I I plan to use this fact defensively. Should should my mind uh, seem to weaken, uh, you know, it's two consecutive hours of discussion slash debate with Christopher Hitchens is something that no one should. Uh, should have to do. It's 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 strenuous, but um, thank you. I think we per- we persist. What'd you say? I said thank you. I think. Yes, yes. No, I meant that in a nice way. We'll get to the stuff that I, I don't mean did. in a nice way uh, shortly. In fact, let's start with one. Uh, the one thing. Okay, we're going to talk about religion now. And one thing I've always wanted to ask you is the, about the subtitle of your well-known book, uh, "God Is Not Great," which is uh, I think it's either how or why religion. Poisons everything. Yes. Probably how, right? And I, I've often wondered how literally you mean that. I mean, you don't mean I shouldn't drink this glass of water because everything has been poisoned by religion, right? You're not taking it quite that far. No, but um, I do say that it, it does so to speak poison the whole well in that it attacks us in our deepest integrity. The main point I encounter in debates with the faithful is the uh, claim that without the supernatural guidance, we wouldn't ourselves be able to determine right and wrong or distinguish between mm. the two. Mm. Um, that we're playthings of a, of a dictated morality. And I find that objectionable for so many reasons, but the one I'll isolate for this purpose is that it, 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 it appears to uh, rob us of our responsibility as well as our integrity. And so, yes, that, that actually would, once that attack's been made, it will creep into absolutely everything, and, and I think does. Mm-hmm. I guess I don't think it's as easy um, as some people uh, do to, and this is, this is not, a, not a defensive of faith by itself, it's, it's just a point. Um, I don't find it as, as easy as it is commonly asserted by, in particular, uh, Dan Dennett, for uh, someone without reference to uh, religious assumptions to construct uh, a a morality and and indeed to sustain a belief in absolute right and wrong. Now, I myself am faced with that challenge because I don't subscribe to any uh, any any conventional religious faith or or any or 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 claim any any kind of revealed faith that would that would guide me here. So I'm familiar with the problem of trying to construct on a secular foundation a, you know, a, a moral philosophy to live by. I actually think, and I think most uh, philosophers who who who, um, who study uh, what is it called metaethics, I guess, the ultimate foundations of ethics. Um, I think most of them would agree it's a it's 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 a quite uh, contentious question as to whether it is doable. I mean, you know, where. Where do your moral, I mean, you tell me, you, I think, subs- believe in right and wrong in some fairly absolute sense. You tell me, uh, if you don't believe in God, uh, where, do you, where do you get these beliefs? Well, I don't know where I get them from, but I know there were things that I was, so to speak, born knowing and didn't need to have, <clears throat> excuse me, instilled in me or inculcated. And I think that the origin of them is what's made our civilization possible, which is that as a species, once we left the savannah, uh, it was necessary to have, well, and indeed I'm sure on the savannah as well, to have a certain degree of solidarity, reciprocity, mutual aid. It might sound reductionist to say that it's uh, evolutionarily advantageous to have this. Other species have it too, as we've observed. They have families, they have they, they have. Uh, solidarity in the face of enemies they care for mm-hmm. their children and so forth, they're young let's say um, mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's not peculiar to us but we have a special awareness of it and, and we seem to have a revulsion to the same sorts of things, in other words to take, keep it at the primitive level for now I mean, incest and cannibalism say, hardly need to be forbidden by any religious code, some religious codes actually almost mandate them with it. They don't last for very long because people who practice ancestral cannibalism won't make it. Those societies will collapse or those mm-hmm. tribes will collapse. Um, 
Now, some people would want to say, I suppose, this sounds a bit cold or a bit mechanistic. I mean, what, what of altruism and so forth? Well, I can't tell you either why it is that I get pleasure from making a blood donation. But I do. I enjoy doing it. I feel I've done a good thing. It makes, it makes my day. Um, in addition to that, I haven't lost a pint of blood, or only for a few minutes. I re- regain it with a strong cup of tea. Um, but someone else has gained one. And I happen also to have a very rare blood group, so I have a general interest in the blood donor system continuing to function. I, I don't think there's any need to involve a supernatural being in this. And if there is, then you have to explain why that supernatural being so often wants you to do immoral things. He'll tell you, you must destroy not, not just the Amalekites militarily and the Midianites, but you must kill all their children um, and enslave uh, for prostitution their women. And, 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 so the lives, and the livestock, if I were, if, 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 if you yes. I mean, these, to the these things are, or, or you must mutilate the genitals of your children, something that wouldn't naturally occur to me to do. You'll suddenly present you with a baby girl or a baby boy. You think, here's the first thing I've got to do. Yeah. To prove I'm in line with divine morality, I must find a sharp stone and hack around at their genitalia, which mm-hmm. appears to suggest, by the way, that the argument from design is also nonsense because you're born into the world with stuff that uh, God thinks is superfluous, having gone to all that trouble to make you in his image. Yeah. This is nonsense. It's also, I think, wicked nonsense. Yeah, he could have saved himself some trouble by just, sure uh, could. So by the, just redesigning the, so what's, the order. What's obvious to me is, therefore, supernatural morality is not in fact, it's natural. It's the projection of uh, the man-made onto yeah. other human beings. Yeah, I, I, I certainly don't don't deny that. I, I still think it's not so easy to to construct uh, an airtight absolute morality uh, from purely secular premises. Um, again, I try. I am in a position where I have to try myself. It just doesn't seem that easy. I mean, you said that there are things that, for whatever reason, feel good. Um, well, I, I think the knowledge that we're designed by natural selection should lead us all to cast some suspicion on all the things that naturally feel good. I mean, there's reason to believe uh, that rape under certain circumstances and certainly killing uh, under certain circumstances um, that most of us would, would not applaud um, is, a, is natural. And, and, and that the impulse to do it is natural, that doesn't mean we should obey the impulse, right? No, when I say it makes me feel good, of course, I don't just mean it gives me a bang. Um, because there are things that I've enjoyed doing that I've also felt bad about doing. I, mm-hmm. I, I don't think I necessarily want to specify, but I'm sure anyone... Feel free. It, it I'm sure all the, all the customers know roughly what one's talking about, um, the various kinds of opportunism. Uh, but they, but they, they, it's a strange thing. One definition of morality, as you know, is uh, what you do when nobody's looking. Um, uh Conscience is one word for it. That's the one that C.S. Mm-hmm. Lewis preferred. Um, Adam Smith called it the, the, your unseen auditor. You feel that you're, you don't want to be looked at askance by someone you don't, you don't actually know, but you can imagine having a, taking a bit of a dim view of what you're doing. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the various attempts at it, but it does seem to be, except for the proportion of socio and psychopathic people in the population, who either get positive pleasure from unkindness to others, or who don't realize that other people are also important. These presumably also are made in God's image, and or are, I would prefer to say, the product of natural selection. But it, for ordinary discourse, I think it's enough to say that people, children, indeed, can be seen to have some innate sense of fairness, of what's cruel, of what's nasty, even though it may need some reinforcement. Yeah, but of course you're, you're you, you know we're using cruel and nasty as if the definitions were self-evident, and the whole problem of metaethics is to come up with an abs- you know a premise about what is good to begin with, and then build on that. Well, now, I myself am, am a utilitarian because I think it's just about self-evident that human happiness, human welfare, is a good thing. Yes. But I think if you don't posit something like that, I don't know where you go, and I kind of doubt. Although I don't know that you're you would call yourself a utilitarian. Um, so I don't know where you get your premises. But. I find utilitarianism a bit thin, but I'm perfectly willing to have as common ground that uh, the obligations of society, the human solidarity, as I prefer to call it, um, are, if you discharge them, if you live up to them, feel obliged by them, they're, they're good for others and good for you. And it hardly needs to be pointed out that you have an interest in the welfare of other people. For example, you know, I want other people to have 
good health because I don't want infectious disease in the school my children go to. I don't want everyone to be vaccinated, all this kind of thing. I mean, it's very ABC. The, the, the difference is, it seems to me, between that and religion is this. Religion can order good people to do bad things. That's the surprising thing. We'll say um, you are to consider your homosexual friend less than human. Mm-hmm. Uh, you are to consider women to be an inferior creation. Every monotheism says that at one point or another, sometimes very emphatically. Um, this, these are not helpful to our evolution at all. In fact, they've gravely retarded. You are to mutilate the genitals of your children, for example. You are to regard infidels as people who should be enslaved or killed. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the, it's it's the wickedness that's preached by religion that intrigues me. It, it, it's so often assumed that oh well the ten commandments are at least okay. Well look, there's no society ever been known where perjury and theft and murder are highly prized. And there were many many human societies long before the mythical events that are supposed to have occurred in Sinai. We don't need uh, God to tell us that. It takes the same God of Moses right. to order. Uh, and license and give a warrant for slavery, rape, genocide, right. and mutilation. Right. I know. I I don't think we do need uh, God to to tell us, in a fundamental sense, to be good. I think that there there are various intuitions that you and I would both endorse that are natural. Um, and, and indeed, there are ethical premises that people everywhere happen upon, regardless of how divergent their their religion. So it's it, it you know. Uh, so it's it's hard to attribute that to um, certainly to any one religion, but I, I think maybe where we differ is the question of whether religion is necessary to do bad. You're right that religion can order people to murder. Well, so can nationalism. You know, so can anything sure. that has that is that is uh, given moral force by people who subscribe to it, and everyone attribute moral force to something pretty much to something they subscribe to, and when they kill people. They justify it in those terms. Of course. What's not clear to me well, people, is that... Well, people do have a tendency to decide that violence is justified in their own case. But if you want a, a, right. a, if you want a multiplier, for indeed for racism and nationalism too, if you say that this, this uh, nation or race has God on its side, I mean, every as you know, the belt buckles of every soldier in the German army that uh, organized Hitler's genocidal imperialism Mm-hmm. The belt buckle reads Gott mit uns in German, yeah. God is with us. Um, it's a huge multiplier of what might already be latent in possessive, acquisitive human beings. I, I think well, you'll find course, that's consistent across the board. Of course, of course, most American soldiers were probably believers, and their courage during the war, that very same war, was probably sustained by the belief that they would go to heaven. And I think you would say they were on the right side. So it seems to me that in that case, it's certainly far from being the case that religion was on balance, uh, you know. No, I, I mean, and, would, and, yes, and of course the Americans would, won. That's true, but it would support my point that this is man-made, because it can't possibly be that God was on both sides. Well, certainly man-made. Christopher, you're not going to get, I'm not, a, you know, you're not going to get an argument with me about that stuff. No, I'm not trying the to question, pick one. I'm just saying it's, it's we, an under, I, I want to get back to the, the subtitle of your book, How Religion Poisons Everything. It's just not evident to me that it does. So what, well, what I do think you a, say? I think, no, I think a religion, I think that religion makes good people consider doing or justify doing bad things. And I w- also I'd add that it often makes very intelligent people say very stupid things. And it also often makes people do very good things. What do you say about someone like Martin Luther King, who I think we both say did very good things, who who presumably was sustained and fortified by his religious faith? Is that not an example of religious belief well, doing good? Without knowing the man, I, I can't be sure of that. I know two things. One... Well, I I would propose one thing, and I would say I knew another. I I think it's highly unlikely that he would have been indifferent to the civil rights of black Americans if he wasn't a Christian. After all, most of the people who organized and started the civil rights movement were secularists. They've all been written out of the record now, but the people who actually organized the March on Washington, people like Bayard Rustin, famous social democrat, people like A. Philip Randolph, the great black trade union leader, Walter Ruther of the United Automobile Workers, none of these people were godly in the least. That's the first thing. I don't know. Of course, you don't have to believe in God to believe that uh, African-Americans have rights. Second, um, uh, it is is tactically certainly true that in the conditions of the South at that point, you had a better chance of getting your voice heard and broadcast and also a certain immunity 
if you were doing it from the pulpit, because it's the most Christian part of the country, and also because the justification for slavery in the first place and later for segregation was biblical. Mm -hmm. So it was a way of tactically turning the tables, but that only replaces the question, doesn't it? I mean, it was Christianity that brought this horrific state of affairs about. Third, I'd add, by preaching the Exodus myth, that was his template. It was always going on about mm -hmm. promised land and such. We're fortunate that Dr. King didn't seem to believe what he said because the Exodus myth entitles the oppressed and wandering people to kill anyone who gets in their way and take their land, rape their women, enslave their children. Fortunately, he wasn't a believer in the Testament. Well, a, a, that fact points to what I've noticed again and again, which is the exquisite adaptability of religion and, and the ability of people to selectively resort to Scripture to do either good or bad. In this case, it seems to me good. Um, I, I, I would say, uh, you know, in the case of uh, the fact that Christianity brought us slavery uh, and, and the fact that there were um, uh, secular people on, on Martin Luther King's side, of course, there were also very religious abolitionists. Again, yeah. I just, I, it seems to me about 50-50 on balance. In any event, the idea that religion poisons oh, not everything 50, is a long 50, way no, to step. Not 50-50, no. And I, and I, no. And I, and I, can I, can I just ask you, are you saying Martin Luther King was not, maybe was not religious and cynically used the pulpit? Did I hear you saying that? No, I, 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 I wasn't him, and I didn't know him, so I don't know whether he was a sincere believing Christian or not. I mean, he studied Hegel and Marx when he was in college. Um, he had a lot of friends. Most of his friends seem to have been um, secular leftists. Well, do I you don't know if he was himself. Of... I don't, what he thought when he was alone, whether he really prayed and really believed the prayers were answered, I have no idea what he... If he if he'd confined himself to praying, he certainly would have got nowhere. I can well, tell I you haven't that. heard you. No, just, sorry, I, I just I have to say you're wrong about fifty fifty with abolitionism. Centuries of of Christian endorsed slavery, and then a few decades where yeah. a minority of Christians finally decide that this isn't intolerable. Um, yeah. uh, but the people who founded the American Anti Slavery Society, for example, Benjamin Franklin was a member, Thomas Paine was a member. These were not these were not believers. Um, the chances that you'd be a non-believer and an abolitionist would be much, much, much higher than that you'd be a, a Christian. And to this day, where slavery is officially practiced anywhere in the world, it's always with the authority of a religious text. Well, the, that's um, actually not, except in North Korea, which I would define as a slave state, um, which is a worshipful, but pagan state, worships human beings. Um, well, generally, most I, I, slavery in Africa now is, is, is justified by the Quran. I, I mean, I would say two things about... Uh, Martin Luther King. One is, uh, yes, there were various secular people involved in the civil rights movement. Again, I don't think religion uh, particularly disposes you toward good. I'm not making that argument. I'm, make, I'm making the argument that it often does good, and so that the subtitle of your book, unless it's meant as hyperbole or as a joke, um, is, is, is overstated. Um, and I, I would say in the case of King, um, you know, uh, true, there were, there were many secular people, but... Uh, uh, he, more than anyone, showed, uh, uh, more than anyone I can think of, showed uh, the kind of courage that is uh, almost uniquely invent, evinced by believing that there's a good chance you'll be assassinated pretty soon if you keep speaking in public, and yet speaking in public. And that's the kind mm -hmm. of thing that a Christian can do because uh, they think mm -hmm. they're, uh, they're going to heaven. Now, secondly, I would say, you know, you... you, you 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 uh, entertain these doubts as to whether he's really religious, and of course that's convenient for your analysis since he clearly did good. No, I, I, I just heard, that I can't, I I can't know. Christopher, it. if I can just finish, if I can just finish, I have not heard you entertain those kinds of doubts about radical imams, who I would say are at least as likely to be cynically uh, using religion. But uh, but that's not a theme I've heard oh. you emphasize. Oh well, then you should have done. I mean, when when you hear radical imams saying to people. If you put on this uh, belt and blow yourself up and kill the Jews, the sons of pigs and monkeys, mm -hmm. you'll go straight to paradise. It's actually occurred in the minds of some people who've given up suicide bombing. If you're so sure of that, why don't you do it yourself, Imam? Why don't you? Of course, it's of course. I think that au fond, at bottom, um, all religion is partly hip hip hypocritical and partly racketeering. I just don't say that it all is. Now, just back to King for a second. I don't know that he was a true believer. I can't know that. He, he, he was able to give sermons that would stir even someone like myself. I, I can say that much. Um, 
what you said about him, though, and his willingness to die for his beliefs could just as well be said and was often said of heroic communists, um, including in the South, by the way, where the, the American Communist Party's most shining record is in the civil rights movement. What does that say to you about American communism? It says nothing to me. I suppose it stands to their credit that they did do that, but it proves exactly nothing about the doctrine of communism or their heroes in the Spanish Civil War or the resistance to Hitler um, and so forth. I mean, you could easily yeah. say it, but it would be trivial. I'm not saying religion is a prerequisite for good or courage or anything else. You're the one with the subtitle, Why Religion or How Religion Poisons Everything. Yeah, and I've explained why I think that's so. I think it's an attack on our integrity. It says that we are the playthings of the supernatural. That we excuse our own responsibility, and we wouldn't even know right from wrong if it wasn't for divine ordination. Uh, revelation. I think that, well, that I first, think that makes us contemptible. It makes you a slave well, right there. And well, if the, you're a slave, then all the pleasures of art, which religion has contributed to, music, which it's contributed to, so all of these things are transient because you are, un, you're by definition, an unfree person. So I believe um, that the the crucial emancipation uh, that every individual and every society ultimately has to make is from religion. There. I'll say it all again if you like. Uh, well, no, you don't have to. The, the, and in a way, the reason I dwelt in the beginning of this dialogue on how it is that a secular person uh, goes about uh, constructing an ethical system was to establish my belief that basically uh, pretty much everyone gets by in life uh, on the basis of some beliefs that they actually can't prove, okay? And... Um, and in that sense, uh, it's not strictly rational. And in that sense, religion is not uniquely irrational in helping people provide themselves with a foundation for ethics. Now, forgive me, but in, in the various things you said in response to my questions, I did not hear any kind of coherent argument about why you should trust certain moral intuitions or why X is good or Y is good. And I'm really not sure you've done the work to permit yourself to say that whereas religious people have to accept, accept something on faith or something they can't prove, you get by in life without anything of that sort. It's it's not clear to me that that's uh, that that's the case. So so if what you're saying with that subtitle is that uh, religion uniquely keeps keeps us from having an entirely rational foundation for our lives, I beg to differ. I think almost no one has an entirely rational foundation for their life. I, and I and I fear to say that 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 maybe one of the people who has the best case for having one would be someone like Nietzsche. I mean, uh, I, I think it's certainly internally consistent to say that nothing is morally self-evident to you, and in that sense, rational. But but um, right. well, um, first, uh, I don't disagree with you about uh, the partly rational because we're we're members of a primate species that's the product of evolution by mutation and natural selection. And our prefrontal lobes are not quite as big as they might be, and our adrenaline glands are probably larger than we now need. And we, we, we are only partially rational, and it certainly shows. We're only half a chromosome away from being chimpanzees, but we, I think, have a, a ways of revering and preserving our rational faculties. And, uh, and if you asked me who I thought had done that best, I would say Spinoza. Spinoza's ethics are very persuasive, and they, they're not derived from anything that comes from divine revelation Wait, or, this is, or this supernatural. Wait, is whose ethics? I'm, I'm sorry, whose ethics? Spinoza. They, uh, oh. uh, uh, first known as Baruch, but then when right, expelled right. and excommunicated and condemned, ostracized by his synagogue in Amsterdam, um, uh, uh, and condemned uh, by all the Christian churches in Europe as well, a, became a ben pantheon, Benedict Spinoza. Uh, a pantheist by common description, right? Yeah, well, it, it, yes, pantheism is the only way. He's not even a deist. I mean, you know, he says that God is sort of everywhere and everything. Right. He's the, 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 he repudiates the idea of a personal God. Then the right. second very intriguing question, what things can we say are true for all time? Now, what most people have hit upon is the golden rule, sometimes known as love thy neighbor, sometimes love thy neighbor as thyself, which I think is, by the way, impossible, and even immoral, because it demands something of you you can't do, so you'll have to go on failing, so therefore you'll have to feel guilty. No one's going to love people like they love themselves and their own families. So it's guilt-inducing and, and, and coercive. But the, or sometimes stated, as it was by Rabbi Hillel um, and Confucius, long before uh, any monotheism by Confucius and the Analects, 
don't do to another person what you wouldn't like done to yourself. Now, mm -hmm. is that really true for all time and all people? I would actually say not. I mean, it's only as good as the person saying it, for one thing. I mean, well, why, wait, I, don't so want Char I, I, don't, I don't want Charles Manson to be treated as I want to be treated. It's, I don't. Uh, there are a lot of no, people, there are no, a lot of people but, I think should be treated worse than me, and I could give you persuasive reasons why I think that's so, but I couldn't right. say I'd found an absolute truth, and neither can any religious spokesman do that. I, right. I, I'm so content that some questions that are They say that I would not ask myself to be treated, to be kept out of prison if I murdered people, and so they, they maintain an internal consistency while subscribing to the Golden Rule, but you're right, that's why subscribing to the Golden Rule by itself will get you nowhere, I wouldn't because call people that are very I wouldn't good at thinking that, of reasons to exclude people. I would, I would call that casuistry. Um, What's that? I, would, I wouldn't call it consistency. I'd call it casuistry. And when you're talking to people like that, they, they already have all the information they need so that every new thing that is, is discovered or thought, they say, oh, actually, that was always in the Bible all along. There's, there's no nourishment in a discussion of that, of that yeah, kind. Well, let me, uh, it's the well, same well, as saying those who are without sin, only those without sin can cast the first stone. It's a mm -hmm. completely preposterous idea, um, as is the idea of an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Both these extreme positions on morality um, are taken in, in the Bible, and both of them are utterly useless to us. One is savage and boring, and, and the other is insipid and inapplicable. Uh, I'm saying what, what, wherever we are going to find moral rules that are more or less consistent across time and societies, and we are very lucky as a species in that mm -hmm. there's almost no difference between us. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the variation among humankind is so tiny as to be almost not measurable. If we were, all, if we were dogs, we'd all be the same breed. So the, there probably is a likelihood we could find some code on which everyone would be able to agree. But we haven't, I think, quite done that yet. And one reason for that is that religion stands in the way. I'm never going to subscribe to Muslim morality. Uh, and I don't think anybody should. No, I, I think sec secular people have just as much trouble disagreeing on morality as uh, religious people, I believe, in my own experience. Well, they don't but... invent difficulties where none exist. They don't say... You said earlier about Dr. King, how it shows how adaptable, when I said how good it is he didn't take Exodus literally, you said, well, religion is marvelously adaptable. What you mean is that there's a, there is a human standard to which religion eventually had better conform if it wants to be thought moral. For example, the Jewish prayer begins, it's supposed to begin every day for a man. So I, before we start, I just want to thank God for making me a man and not a woman and for not making me a Gentile. Right now, how many Jews do you know who really believe that? I know some who are very orthodox who do. Most Jews say, no, that's terrible. You know, in order to be moral, I have to forget what God asks me to do. Yeah. You'll find that's true across every religion. Right, but as way. you said, you don't know many Jews like that in the modern world, even right. though it's a scripture that was once taken very seriously, which well, points to the, the word of God, man. I mean, no, you can change religion. Or not. Yeah, but you didn't need religion to, to make people tribalistic, Okay. You can, you know, you can, you can go to hunter-gatherer societies uh, who don't justify their hostility toward neighboring peoples by reference to the will of any particular god. People are just very good at tribalism, sure. and when they're religious, it's manifested that way. And yeah. when, and when they're, and, but it doesn't have to be. And men are not bad at wanting to keep women as available chattel either, if they're left That's to themselves. Right. But, but to sanctify it with a divine warrant, wouldn't you say? makes those things worse. Poisons them, in fact. Uh, to say, well, this I is think, not, this is not me. Badness... If someone says this, he says, I'm proposing today, tell you what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go and blow up an old people's home in Natania on Passover. Why mm -hmm. am I going to do this? It doesn't sound like a very recreational, moral way to spend your day. I'm doing it because God wants me to do it. I, I've mentioned this to you before. I mean, if, if a, if a, if a Greek-American soldier Blew, him, uh, blew himself up in, in his barracks or murdered his fellows, saying, you know, I can't stand the fact that the United States policy is so pro-Turkish mm -hmm. in NATO. You would not think that that was a, a good enough reason, would you? But it, once it's been invested with the divine, everyone says, oh, my God, we've got to take all this very seriously. Yeah, but that's that, a good I, that's example. The, that's the indulgence I want to withdraw from consideration just, of wickedness. But you just gave us an example where the motivation is nationalistic and not religious, and I don't understand the argument you're making, if you are making it, that the fact of a religious justification makes a crime worse than it would otherwise be. To, to my mind, keeping women as chattel is as bad as it is 
whatever the justification is invalid. And, and, and I don't see how it being in a religious context makes it worse. Did right. I misunderstand you? Uh, well, only if you didn't get my or didn't agree with my observation that if these things are given divine warrant, that they're thereby strengthened. If you don't think giving oh, them a well, divine sure. warrant strengthens them, then, of course, we have no, no sure. quarrel. But I, sure. I think that a lot of people were prevented from seeing what was wrong about slavery because they said it was mandated in the Bible, which it is. I think I personally would have to say that I doubt whether the Roman Catholic Church's description of Jews as collectively, indefinitely responsible for deicide had nothing to do with the massacre of the Jews of Europe. I have a feeling that the two things are connected. I can't absolutely prove it, but I, would, well, I wouldn't, you know, trust, I mean, any, here, I wouldn't here, trust any disproof either. Here we have, uh, 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 here, ironically, I may be a better Marxist than you, although you have a richer uh, background uh, in, that, in that belief system, where I, I, I just think that, you know, people create whatever ideological uh, justification they need, ideology defined broadly to include religion, for what they uh, are motivated to do by material, political, economic, uh, self-interested, you know, f factors. And so there we just disagree, and there's probably no point belaboring that argument. No, I, I, I certainly, uh, German imperialism wanted to uh, take the property of the Jewish people of Germany and uh, dispossess uh, them of it. Uh, there's no question about that, and, and of um, other countries too. And they, But the, the power of the anti-Semitic ideology on which they were able to draw came from generations of religious miseducation and lying. Well, about yeah, about the Jews being an, it, an alien and uh, evil people. But isn't it worth noting that his, I'm sure you you have to respond to this point all the time. No doubt you've got a great response. But isn't it notable that Hitler and for that matter the sponsors of pretty much all of the great atrocities of the 20th century, Stalin, Mao, and so on, um, seem not to have been theists. Oh, to the contrary. Um, I mean, Hitler's first uh, political action was a concordat with the Vatican. Which... Well, he was a politician, of course. I mean, see, this is what I mean. You are so selective in when you decide to be to attribute cynicism to oh. someone's use of religion. Okay, in that case, the fact that he deployed religion for political purposes because he was a bad guy, you say, reflected real religiosity. No, I didn't I'm say not that. I didn't say that. I said it's, it's, to bad it's, ends. it's ridiculous to say that he was secular or atheist. Otherwise, why would the German? Army belt buckle have said God on our side. Why would uh, again, the, why, to inspire or, or the, I'll take the a trivial, soldiers I'll take a trivial point. who were themselves I'll religious, take, I'll of take course. A, I'll take a trivial point. Um, the, the, uh, Hitler's birthday was celebrated from the pulpits in Germany by order of the churches every year of his well, of time. Well, that, have, doesn't, that uh, well, doesn't reflect just saying, don't say, don't call, religiosity. Don't call, him, don't call him secular then. I only know that, of one place in official Europe. Now, I think there probably is only one where you can still see a swastika on on a display, it's in it's in the huge basilica uh, near the Escorial outside Madrid. Uh, that is, what, among other places, where Franco is buried. It was built with slave labor from the Republican losers of the Civil War. There's a swastika mm -hmm. on the ceiling when you look up uh, to honor the German contribution to the victory of Catholic Spain over atheism. Um, and there's actually there's also a German steel helmet in the mosaic. Uh, I'm sorry, I, 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 you you might not know this, but you irritate me and you potentially insult me by suggesting that my opinions are to be grouped with um, national socialism. I won't have what? it, in other words. Wait, 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 wait. The, the, guilt is, the, guilt is on the, the guilt is on the other side. Oh, oh, you mean because I'm saying Secularism that... and atheism are not part of uh, the, the, the hideous system of fascism, which, in my opinion was mainly a product in southern and so northern you, Europe you take it, of, the, you take of, the, it of the Catholic clerical right wing. You take it as an affront to you personally and an indictment of you personally if I point to an atheist no, who has I, done I something like bad. Even, I say I don't like even the suggestion of it. I'm, I'm being as mild as I can. And, and, and do you similarly uh, exercise the restraint you're asking me to exercise by not suggesting in the presence of any religious person, including a very good one, that any other religious person has ever done anything bad? Are you similarly considerate of their feelings as you're asking me to be? No, I'm not saying you mustn't hurt my feelings. No, I'm I didn't saying think you would you be. ought to be aware that you're doing so. I, I looked to me as if you didn't so you're realize not that you were, you were making, you didn't, it. It looked to me as if you were without knowing it. So I forgive you, making an insinuation.
So it's something that needs forgiving. Well, then when you do the comparable thing with religious people, does that need forgiving? Is that something that, that, that should be forgiven? Well, the Catholic Church has tried and failed to apologize for its uh, generations. That's of, not, uh, Christopher, don't change the subject. No, what I'm, I'm asking no, is I'm, this. I'm, I'm, I mean, this I'm is really, exactly where this I was. is such the, the, a typical the, debating point I'm by sorry, you, the, okay? The, I'm sorry. If there was nothing in what I said, the Vatican wouldn't have kept on trying to apologize for its years of anti-Semitic propaganda. I mean, it wasn't until 1964, uh, 30 years after, nearly 30 years after the, the Nuremberg trials, the 20 years after the Nuremberg trials, that they uh, said that they no longer accused the Jewish people collectively of, of a deicide. Christopher. Um, I, don't, I still don't think the apology is complete, but I, I can see the bad conscience that they must have about it. Now, you, <laughs> say, is- you say that's just political opportunism, um, the, the alliance between between Hitler, Mussolini, Franco, Salazar, uh, all the On other Hitler's dictators, part, yeah. and, and the church. I say it's not. I say it's the product of a long period of telling people who might not otherwise have got the idea yeah. in every mass, every Easter, that the Jewish people were their enemies. I think you can't do that and not expect bad behavior to be a consequence of it. And you just brushed it off and said, oh, well, people just make up ideologies to suit them. Actually, it wasn't very evolutionarily helpful. Um, for uh, Jews to be driven out of Europe and, and murdered and their property taken. All societies who, who that do, all societies that do that fall, in, fall into ruin. Christopher, Christopher, well, who you said, said it was? Well, you said you were utilitarian. Christopher, what point are you making? Who said it was? Well, I'm saying your utilitarian point seems a bit thin in the face of that, doesn't it? What? But these do things are just invented as, as and Christopher, when. Christopher, can I talk? Do utilitarians believe can that you everything that, that happens is for the good? Is that what you think a utilitarian is? No. What the utilitarian principle is... Most famously, uh, encapsulated as the greatest happiness for the greatest number. That is what is to be desired, yeah. not what always happens. No. And I'm saying it's no less likely to happen under religious auspices than under secular auspices. I mean, these periods of history you're talking about are periods back when virtually everyone was religious. Pretty much every good thing and bad thing that happened uh, was, was done by a religious person. But I just got, have to return to this silly point you brought up where... Because I pointed to an atheist who'd done something bad, uh, you, you turned around and made it sound like it was some inexcusable affront to you personally. And, and, and then I said, well, wait a second. When you do a comparable thing to a religious person, in the presence of a religious person, complain about some crime uh, uh, perpetrated by a religious person, you know, should they be equally offended? And, and you went off on some weird tangent. I just don't, you know, that's just a silly distraction. I mean, do you really think I, when that I, you I'm should sorry, reasonably you've, you've, be... Uh, I, I, think, I think you'll find that the, the, the digression is your fault. I said that I thought that a, a long religious preachment, in this case of anti-Semitism by Christianity, had had terrible consequences, had made good people behave badly in a, in a, in a, in a very epoch-making way. And you appear to say in, in repost that the, the main preacher of that evil, Adolf Hitler, was in some way... Uh, of my way of thinking about religion. I, I, I had to say I thought that that was, A, wrong, well, and no. B, without, without becoming cheerful about it, um, it, it, more insulting than you might want to be. I mean, if you, you should either say if you think that Nazism is a version of secularism, if you think so, or, or not. But don't, uh-huh, don't try I, and just I, imply I, it. As for I'm taking flattered. offense, look, look, man, I mean, I, every day I have to listen to religious people saying that the teachings of Darwin are false, that Jews should be killed, that homosexuals are wicked, that women... I mean, if I, if I was insulted by this kind of thing, if I took offense, I'd have, I'd have no time to do anything I'm, else. It's, it's they who say they have the right to threaten me with death for offending them, who are the problem. Don't try and put me on all fours with that either, please. <laughs> well, I'm flattered that you feel a need to distract us from, from the actual issues of the I don't know, I think that raise. was actually it was a digression... <clears throat> But it, and uh, I think you started it, but I, th- I think it was worth having. Okay, so so in the future, no one in a debate with you about whether religion is a is a uh, is on balance a good thing or a bad thing, and by implication, whether uh, non-belief is more likely to be a good thing than a bad thing, will be allowed in your presence to point to anything an unbeliever has done that is bad. I can see how those debating rules I'll would favor myself, you, and I don't I blame I, you I, for I will, advocating them. I will Christopher. put myself in the safekeeping of. The people who watch this item, you will and be in see, good hands, and, I'll, and sure. I'll ask them to write in if they say that you have um, summarized my opinion. Christopher, correctly. you don't have to worry. I assure you that on this issue of religion, you have many more followers on this website than I have. 
I've done the empirical no, it's work. Not, it's not a matter Don't of worry. Overt. The commenters will be overwhelmingly on your side, and if that's your primary goal in life, you have arrived. Um, no, that, I wouldn't say that it was. Anyway, I, I don't think that um, I should take any more time with this. I, I, I'll just put myself in the keeping of the audience and see if anyone thinks you summarized my opinion correctly. Okay. So we can move on then? Well, what choice do we have? Uh, okay. So one, let me, let me, let me give you one exam, example. I take you to be saying that the, there's something inherently bad about the irrational influence of religion. And, and I, I would like to, 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 to move the subject soon to the question of how, how should we confront, what strategically should we do about, uh, cases where undeniably religion has become intertwined with bad and, and does help motivate people to do bad, which I certainly don't deny. But first, I just want to, to clarify the meaning of your subtitle uh, and, and your position on the intrinsic badness of the irrational influence of religion. I just want to give you an ex a case where I think the, the irrational influence of religion was good, and, and let me know, A, if you agree, B, if you find that inconsistent with your thesis. Um, I was, when I was, a, I was raised a Southern Baptist, um, and in El Paso, Texas, in the early 60s, this is around uh, the time that the Civil Rights Act was being passed. And it was, you know, Texas was certainly not uh, the state where it was most uh, popular. Um, and, and there I was, a, uh, you know, seven or eight-year-old or something, uh, subject to the irrational influence of the Southern Baptist Church. And what was going on in that church was that every week in Sunday school, we sang the song, Jesus Loves You, which includes the words, uh, Jesus, or Jesus Loves the Little Children, which includes the words, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. And I, I cannot imagine that that did not reinforce in my mind the idea that black people are just as valuable morally as white people. It reinforced it in an irrational way. It wasn't, it wasn't like a logical argument. It was drawing on my irrational devotion at that mm -hmm. time to God. It seems to me that that was a positive effect of religion, and I think I could point to many others, not to mention all the people working in soup kitchens under religious inspiration and so on. But, A, do you, do you, do you deny that that's, that's an no. example of no, the good no, use? not at all, any more than I would deny. I mean, some people appear to say that if it wasn't for their belief in God, they wouldn't be giving money, say, to charities in Africa. Okay. I mean, I, I, I find it an alarming admission. They say, it's because I'm a Christian that I do it. And I say, they say, what, if you lost your faith, you'd stop caring about Africans. I, I never quite understand that. But let's say, I, I grant it happily, that some people make that their reason, and perhaps it gives them an additional motivation. I, I'm quite content. I take them at their word. Um, my challenge on this point is the following. I'm sure I've tried it on you before. If I haven't, I'll try it on you now. You have to name a moral action or an ethical statement made by someone of faith or because of their faith that couldn't be made by me as an unbeliever. You won't be able to find one. Um, and if you're, well, you, if you're, you telling, me that, if you're telling me that without that verse, you would mm -hmm. have thought, well, when it says Jesus loves the children, um, in itself a meaningless statement, but he, surely that doesn't mean black children. If you're saying... Otherwise, you might have thought that. I leave it to you to say so, but I really doubt it. I mean, well, the, but the, but the corollary to my point, by the way, the corollary question, f find a moral or ethical statement that an unbeliever couldn't make or perform, is think of a bad thing done or said by a believer uh, because of their religion. Now, you've immediately thought of one, and so, is every, so has everyone who's watching this. But I, look, I love I love these I, I love these I love these too. I love these games. For example, ba the Reverend Bailey Smith, some big mouth idiot who was Jerry Falwell's deputy, once made an anti-Semitic statement that I thought was factually true. Shall I tell you what it is? Sure. It, God doesn't hear the prayers of a Jew. He said, I, "I couldn't agree more. I don't think God does hear the prayers of a Jew or anyone else." Right. So you can, if you're a religious person, make a ridiculous statement that is consistent with some of the rules of rationality. But okay. it's, so it's more likely to be a coincidence, I'd say, than anything else. So you ask me if I could name a moral belief held by a religious person that could not be held by a secular person. Moral a action taken or statement made, yes. And can you name for me an immoral action taken uh, by a secular person that could not be taken by a religious person? No, I think I think uh, I'd well, have to it accept seems that like that we're would even. be. My, my point is sustained. But we don't, it's we a don't say that our, we don't say that our morality is necessarily. Superior. We simply say that the the reliance on the supernatural is superfluous at best, and can lead oh. 
and can lead to wicked things. I've already instanced, though you refuse to take me up on it, centuries of Christian preaching against the Jews, which I said, in the end, that was going to lead to evil. And you, you didn't take me up on it then, and you haven't since. You said, oh, well, that kind of thing could happen anywhere. I don't think so. It's a no, long, no, long, it's long, happening. long, long, long inculcation of simple people with evil falsehoods in the name of a religion. Now, you know, religious doctrine does have some enduring, uh, enduring effect. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not the most simplistic kind of, you know, Marxist in that sense or materialist in that sense. I would just say that, you know, back in those days, all good and bad things um, resulted from religion. Now, you, you know, I mean, back when everyone was religion, all the good stuff and bad stuff was justified. When everyone was religious, all the good stuff and bad stuff was justified by religion. And yes, I do believe. By and large, most of the bad stuff was motivated fundamentally not by the religion, although justified in those terms. You know, this is an almost metaphysical debate. I don't think there's any point in carrying it on a lot further. Oh, I, I know I'd like to go on with it a little longer. By the way, since it's the second time you've mentioned Karl Marx, I, I think I, you may have noticed in my book, I, I, I quote what he actually did say about religion. Most people say that he denounced it just as an opiate. I, I quote what he says. It's from the introduction to his critique of Hegel's. Mm -hmm. philosophy of right. He says, religion is the sigh of the oppressed creature, the heart of the, the heartless world, uh, the spirit of a spiritless situation. And then he says it's, it's, it can be an opiate for the people. And he goes on to yeah. say, uh, criticism of religion has plucked the flowers from the chain, and not in order that men and women may wear the chain without consolation, but so that they may break the chain mm -hmm. and cull the living flower. <clears throat> now, I, I perfectly understand why people have a need for the the numinous, you might say, or the transcendent, um, the things that are part of our emotions that are not completely quantifiable to do with music, poetry, love, landscape, and so forth. There's, there's no question that these are essential for us, uh, almost as much as uh, food and uh, drink is. But there's no need to postulate anything supernatural about them. Yeah. I think, that in fact, they're enjoyed better if they don't come as gifts from someone who wants something back from you. Yeah, I, I don't deny. I don't. I don't disagree with you there. Um, one final point on this: is religion good or bad? Uh, or, or where I, I would say essentially neither. It's about equally capable of both. But um, you, uh, in your book, you recount this question. I guess Dennis Prager confronted you with, where he said, uh, "Admit it. If you're walking down the street, it's dark. And there's mm -hmm. nobody else." You see a, a stranger approaching out of the shadows, could be, you know, would you rather be a religious person or not a religious person, yes. right? Um, and your reply was, as I recall, what, what country did you pick where if you were in uh, Well, I said, Lebanon, he or, said you, you, you had to imagine you're in a strange country, a strange town where you don't know anybody. This happens, uh -huh. it's evenings coming on, and you see a group of men coming towards you. Do you feel better or worse if you know they're coming from a prayer meeting? And I said, well, just without leaving the letter B, I've had that experience in Belfast, mm -hmm. Beirut, Baghdad, Bombay, there's another B I'm not coming up with. But th th those four will do. And believe me, you don't want to be around when the church is let out in those places, all the mosques. You don't. Oh, oh come uh, on. So in... um, that's what I, well, I can't say that isn't what I said. Well, well, what, what, I said. what I was curious about was, honestly, if you did the thought experiment in the average American city, say you're in a part of town that could be a little dicey, all you know is whether that person is religious or not. Honestly, you would say in a, in, in, in a part of town that's known to be dangerous and, 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 uh, and, and pervaded by crime, you would say, I would rather it be the not religious person in an American context? Well, in a civilized, secular society with uh, police force and enforceable laws and so on, I don't think it really makes very much difference. So I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want it to be the nation of Islam's church, for example. Um, no, but I mean, well, I, I think there would be there unlikely. One can, in a country that has managed to put religion un under some kind of discipline and control, no, it doesn't apply. But look, there's a tautology involved in, in, in what both of us are saying, actually. When, when you say, well, people do bad things, but that's when everyone was religious, so everything good or bad was religious. And I say, well, I think religion has done some things that it would have taken a belief in God and supernatural permission to turn into wickedness. I still say that since religion is man-made, it, it is, if you like, also a secular product. But there is nothing more, more likely to intensify existing criminal, selfish, racist, enslaving, rapist, genital mutilation tendencies, suicidal and mass murdering tendencies, than the belief that you have a divine permission to do this.
Mm-hmm. And the fact that that is a man-made invention, because obviously it can't be a divine permission in my worldview, doesn't get you off the hook. I say it's religion that poisons everything. Well, actually, the belief that you have a special right because you say I you think, have faith. I think we've uncovered instances where you don't think it poisons everything. Like when I was singing that song in Sunday school, uh, I don't think you thought I was the subject of a poisonous bad thing. Oh, at I that think. Point. Well, but, I think. Well, I would say I think it's. I mean, it's. It's. I said, if you remember, I said it makes good people do bad things, and I added, and I hope you won't take this personally, that it makes stupid. Uh, sorry, it makes intelligent people say dumb things. If you're telling me that on singing a ditty. It says that Jesus loves all the children, and this must mm-hmm. mean black kids. But that that had a real effect on your mind. I'll have to take your word for it. But I mean, I can't believe that it, that such a thing was necessary for you. And I, I, I like think you do yourself old. no favor. I was eight years old. I guarantee you, it did. It was it was it was the uh, I would say benign use of the indoctrination of a child. Well, then you're going to have to accept all the Christian churches that said there are no black people allowed into this church, and God separated the sons of. Shem, Ham, no, no, and Jeff. No, no, no. You see, again, you have to it's accept not them. The if you're going to take credit for one, my dear, you have to accept the responsibility for the rest. Christopher, and I'm, I'm really sorry, I, to... I don't. I actually, I actually don't really believe your story. I don't think that that came as a revelation to you because there's no such person as Jesus. He has no particular attitude towards children, except he thinks people should leave their families and follow him. Um, they and, didn't and, stress and, that. And, and, and I would say, by the way, school, okay? I would say, by the way, denominating those children by color. In the hymn is a bad idea to begin with. So, but why not just say he likes all the children, even though he didn't? Christopher, when you say I have to accept the bad with religion with the good, I do because remember, uh, my I'm not arguing that religion is more good than bad. You're the person with the burden. Well, no, of I'm showing, not there. You see what it is you and, are. And this arguing. explains I mean, why you're straining in these yeah. cases. Well, no, you're the one with the burden of showing that religion always has bad no, effects. No, that's not. No, my burden actually isn't that. My burden is that everybody knows what I think and also how, and I keep saying it again and then giving, I think, ever more beautiful and uh, elegant illustrations of it. But, but it's very difficult to argue with someone whose position is not disclosed. You don't tell me whether you think religion makes people behave better or not. You don't. You, have said, you have said you don't believe in the supernatural, but you, I'm not clear what you do think. You don't have to think anything, but it's very difficult to go around with you when I don't know what your, your views are. Oh, I've, been, I've tried to be uh, as clear as I can. I, I think um, th- that uh, in both my book, Non-Zero, and my book, The Evolution of God, I've argued uh, that, A, there is a, a moral direction to history along at least one dimension. Um, and I, I won't get into it, 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 uh, it even ex- to bother explaining what the dimension is. B, I think uh, that it has some of the hallmarks of purpose in a way that doesn't necessarily imply the existence of a conscious designer, intelligent being, God. Could be that there's a God who set it all in motion in a kind of deistic way, Mm. but my view of history itself is materialistic and doesn't appeal to intervention or anything. In any event, I I believe that there is a moral direction to history that uh, helps me orient my life and in that way uh, provides some of the sustenance that religion provides for people. So maybe I'm religion, yes. e- religious, even though I'm agnostic on the question of whether there's some being behind it all. That, in a, in a nutshell, that's my position. That it could or could not be the case. Well, I mean, I, I don't quarrel with that, but it's hard to argue with. Um, I, think, well, no, I, think, I, I think, by the way, if you care, I, of course I've looked at your book about the evolution of God. And um, I should tell you, I mean, I've, I've had a, I, I say it in my book as well, I mean, my, the hardest thing for me to give up when I stop thinking uh, like a socialist, not entirely stopped thinking like a Marxist, but when I, I found I, I couldn't uh, make it match observable reality anymore. The hardest thing to give up is teleology, is the idea that the future can be better or, mm-hmm. or, or will be, or, or simply in some way ought to be, that we are on, mm-hmm. that our own evolution is an upward curve rather than just yeah. a blip. It's very, very difficult for a human being to give that up. But if you, if you think what you just say you thought... Mm-hmm. Um, I have not given the, the, it up. The apparently. collapse of European civilization into barbarism in the 20th century and the enormous role played by religious superstition in that collapse. Um, the Counter-Reformation, the, crusade, the number of times that civilization was on the march in Europe and was retarded terribly by faith, by the Inquisition, by the Crusades. Yeah. By the, yeah. It makes it to be absolutely impossible for you to say that religion has been anything more than slightly modified in its barbarism by the well, achievements of science and by... And by the exercise of 
ordinary well, humanistic morality. Well, first of all, although my belief is that religion does about as much good as bad, my, my argument about teleology doesn't presuppose that at all. They're unrelated. And so I, I don't want to bore but, you with it, but they're they, just not relevant. You mean the evolution part has nothing to do with your belief in the innate goodness or badness? That seems to be a hard separation to impose upon yourself, but that's, that's, that would be your choice. Uh, I didn't hear you say Anyway, how, how, is the, how is it to be quantified? I mean, for example, if I say what I'm sure of, which is that millions and millions of children's lives have been stunted and, and, and poisoned, to coin a phrase, by yeah. being told they'll go to, they're going to go to hell if they play with themselves or if they become Protestants or, as the case might be, Catholics. I mean, but I, there's no way of quantifying how much harm, how much misery that's done, is there? I, I mean, you, we can we can sometimes do we can sometimes that. do body counts of things like the Thirty it, Years' War and so forth, but it's very very crude. We don't have a means of quantifying the evil that a religion has done. It's very hard. It's very hard to quantify the good. Now, in your book, you generally ignore the good and only focus on the evil, so it's extremely hard to do it in that circumstance. But you know, we we uh, I've waited too long to to get to a subject I think we should at least glancingly touch on because. It's my motivation, really, for challenging your claim uh, that religion is, an, is a, I think, an overwhelmingly universally bad thing, or however you would put it, which is that, that, that I think it leads you to a very counterproductive view on um, foreign policy. It leads you to think that the enemy uh, of, of good is religion per se, that the source of conflict and terror is, is, is so often religion per se, as opposed to underlying circumstances uh, that I think give rise to it. Um, an example I often use uh, is Israel-Palestine, where I think you would agree with me that as an historical matter, the tension there, the conflict there, began in a pretty secular context, right? I mean, the subsequent religious radicalization on both sides is indeed subsequent. And what seems to be the prime mover here is an argument over land. Uh, so... No, I mean, actually, I, I, I'd like to share the premise with you, but I can't because the the claim in the first place, uh, but, but admittedly, it was a fairly secular Zionist movement that Herzl founded, but the claim that they, they were returning to the land is a claim to land that is supposedly awarded to them by God, who right. neither you nor I believe is involved in real estate. Um, the, the opposition to it, would have certainly been there if all the Palestinians were atheists. They wouldn't have wanted right. a Jewish colonization or any other kind. Right. Uh, but, but, it, but as it happens, it's made impossible to solve by the by the opposite claim that, yes, God does give land. Of course, we agree with Zionists and uh, rabbis about this. It's just that he, it's Muslim land. It's, okay. part, it's part of the lost Ottoman uh, Muslim caliphate. Um, you and, remember. of course, no Jews or, or unbelievers are allowed there. So what could have been if it was a territorial dispute solved with a two-state solution that the majority of people want a long time ago is made completely insoluble precisely by not the deists, but the theists, the people who don't just believe in God. They believe God takes their side. But you got to remember, I mean, you, you, you say that the original Zionists appealed to the Bible. That's true. But, but, but they were essentially secular. They appealed to it as an historical document. They which it, is, which it, it isn't. That's the last thing. It well, is. no, of course it's not. But the point is they didn't. Their argument was not, by and large, this proves that God wants us to be here. It was, damn it, we were here first, the kind of argument that secular people can have. And in fact, a very conscious decision was made in the founding documents of Israel to make no appeal, uh, if you read as the Hebrew fact, as opposed to some me, of the translations, uh, me, Robert, to make no but, appeal to divine me, sanction. Excuse me, Robert, the Bible does not say they were there first. They had to clear out everyone else who lived there, the Canaanites. Well, they were there before the Arabs. Well, um, there, were, there are no Canaanites yes, in the, the first, fight today. The, the, okay? earlier, earlier doesn't give you any uh, any special right. Well, that's the way it was. That's the way it was deployed. These well, were not people anyway, who you are, were, who were you know divine sanctions. Whether you know it or not, you're still making my point. Everything they do, they justify either by the, the Bible is either the word of God or a historical document. And you, you yeah. and I both know it's neither. As an historical document. What? Yeah. They were appealing to it as yes, an historical but, yes, document. Yes, but, but it isn't a historical document any more than it's the word of God, uh, unless you disagree. And you don't think that's exacerbated the situation? No, I, I, th I think it was false history, but my point is their motivation was not religion. They, again, as people do, they found whatever convenient was okay, convenient so in the way of the, so, the so the Jewish settlers who moved to the West Bank and steal other people's land are doing it because they think they have a historical claim. Is that what you're really saying? Wait, what did you, I didn't hear that, I'm sorry. The Jewish settlers who moved to the West Bank 
Yeah. And steal other people's land and build colonies on it. Yeah. That are now amount to the size of suburbs. They're doing it because they say they have a, a, a properly legalized historical claim. You know very well that's not what they say. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I said it, indeed, as the, as the conflict festered, it became less nationalist and more religious. But, but the idea that the religion is the underlying cause is a mistake. The religious belief is now a big problem. I don't deny that. Uh, Funny that it should come. Believe, amazing that it should come from nowhere. What? Amazing that it should come from nowhere. Suddenly they're all religious in Jerusalem. I mean, um, you said it. I mean, I, I just have to. I don't not, feel I have to comment all, on they're that. They're not. They're not all religious in Jerusalem. But you're right that most of the, that the more uh, problematic settlers are. Um, yes. Well, if you think but, the quarrel over but, the Holy Land is secular, I'm but perfectly. Course, uh, I mean, in one way, I'm willing to agree with you because, after all, all human conflicts are secular. There is no. God who takes sides. The people who think that he does or she does or it does are yeah. indeed dreaming. All conflicts are non-religious, if you want. I'll happily mm -hmm. say that. The statement there is no God is as meaningless as the statement that there is one, because the entity under discussion is meaningless. Uh -huh. But I, I said religion, not God. Okay? Now, religion okay. has, which is at the root of the original quarrel, mm -hmm. has also made it insoluble, is making it insoluble. These people... If you, well, more, if, you if you look at their propaganda, Jewish and Muslim, they, what they want is for the world to come to an end. They, well, they see in this the sign that they can bring on uh, the Messiah. Mm -hmm. the, the, way, the way this emphasis on the intrinsically, I would say almost autonomously bad role of religion is used by your compatriot Sam Harris, and you may or may not agree with him, is to say, as he said explicitly, do not bother looking for material circumstances that motivate, uh, that underlie uh, violent Palestinian resistance or terrorism, because it's just religion. Now, obviously, the implication of that is don't bother stopping the settlements. Don't bother even messing with things on the ground. And this is what most bothers me, and maybe you don't share Sam's view here, but this is what b most bothers me about such an exclusive and I would say misleadingly exclusive emphasis on religion as the source of all evil. Well, I don't know if that's what he says about Palestine or about the roots of is Islamist uh, violence in general, but I, I'm, sure that, I'm, sure he I I'm sure he wouldn't say the settlements had nothing to do with it. <clears throat> and he certainly wouldn't do what not even you were willing to say and say the settlements are not to do with religion. Um, on, on the broader question, uh, I don't think it's true, for example, that uh, bin Ladenism whatever you want to call it, jihadism is created by poverty and unemployment. No, I know it's the cause of a lot of poverty and unemployment. In fact, it's the deliberate cause yeah. of a lot of poverty and unemployment because that's the ground in which they hope to operate. I mean, the, the blowings up of the uh, hotels in Indonesia, for example, greatly reduced the national income of an already very poor uh, country. It isn't, it isn't the product of unemployment and poverty. It's the cause of it. You'll find that's consistent across the board. Yeah. Afghanistan was reduced to beggary by the Taliban. So the, the, there's an always wonderfully co congruent coexistence between extreme religiosity, poverty, disease, ignorance, illiteracy, and superstition. But it, my that's, own, where, that's emphasis, the stew. That's the stew we're actually dealing with. My, However, I think people who say, "I'm going to kill you," to my friend Fleming Rose, for example, who's the editor of a newspaper in Denmark, an Al Qaeda cell in Chicago, Illinois, sir has been found to have been helping to plot the death of, a, of an editor of a newspaper in Democratic Open Society of Denmark. Are you telling me they're doing that because they, they feel that their wage packet has shrunk? Come on. No, no. No, my own emphasis is really not on uh, poverty, but it is on various material circumstances. And I'll link to the piece in which I quote Sam Harris saying, I think, don't bother to look for this, 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 or any other such variable. We'll, we'll link, and if I'm wrong, we'll see that I'm wrong. But I'm pretty sure he holds that. If you don't, find, then, then I would consider you more enlightened. Well, but then, no, no, I mean, I, I'm a very great admirer of, uh, of Dr. Harris, and um, I'll give you an example of, uh, without consulting him or having read his stuff, the, the uh, government of Gaza is currently run by Hamas, mm -hmm. a ruthlessly Islamist party which publishes the protocols of the elders of Zion, an anti-Jewish fabrication, on its website and calls for the destruction of all Jewish people and for the total Islamization of, of Palestine. Now, these people have been told if they'll drop saying these things, <clears throat> the embargo imposed on them uh, by the United Nations and others in the European Union will be lifted, 
They'll be able to get building permits. They'll be able to have all kinds of, of construction and aid. The floodgates of help will open for the people of Gaza. Uh, but they won't do that. That's not a price. They'll, they'll keep people in Gaza in poverty and misery and fear because they will not give up their religious fanaticism. Well, you know what that's an example of to me? It's the way governing elites in general often sacrifice the welfare of their people. I would make a comparable argument about the relatively secular leadership uh, in the West Bank of the Palestinian people. There are things they could be doing, but it would threaten the supply of money to them, and they're not justifying it in terms of religion, but it's still happening because elites are elites, and they're often bad. But, you know, as well, long as we're on the subject of Sam Harris, the, the one final, we're running over time, but, but finally, I, I said this to, to, to kind of you and Sam in Mexico when we had this debate in Puebla, which I guess we can link to. I mean, it was, it was such a multi-party debate that, that people should not go there for the thrill of uh, uh, mano a mano combat. But, but, uh, no, indeed. but I, said, I, I, said, I said to, you, uh, to Sam, I, I, you know, I think, uh, I don't think I'm caricaturing your view when, you know, I mean, Sam's view especially, but I think yours is, you know, what we have to do, the, the priority has to be, you know, expunge religion from the planet. And I said, so I think, Sam, your view is that if we will only, you know, if we will run up to these uh, Muslim extremists uh, who are terrorists or who may be uh, amenable to that or maybe leaning that direction, grab them, shake them and say, don't you understand? Your God doesn't exist. I think Sam's, <laughs> Sam's view seems to be... That's a productive thing to do. I beg to differ. Uh, and it's, again, because I think religion is not intrinsically bad, and many of these people who have not yet made the leap to terrorism uh, don't, will not necessarily make it, but they're more likely to make it. If you, like all religious people of all persuasions, they are more likely to be fundamentalist if they feel threatened. So leaving aside the merits of the case, I, I don't think it's tactically a productive strategy. Well, I don't know of any instance of George Harris going to the region and telling Muslims they must give up their religion, which is all nonsense anyway. I, I, he's been pursuing his career in neuroscience and building up a wonderful uh, website uh, called Reason, on which you can access almost all the debates and texts, and texts about the debates and debates about the texts of religion uh, since human history began. So I, I don't, what you say isn't even a caricature. What I say in my book, since it's me talking, perhaps I can just discuss that. I say, if religion will leave me alone, I'm fine. I don't, I don't even want to have to know what someone else believes, uh, as long as they keep it at home or within their family. But I know so many people now who live in the United States and Western Europe who have to go around under armed guard for things they've published uh, that are novels, for example. Mm -hmm. or cartoons, or editorials, uh, because Islam says, no, we will follow you home, and we'll kill you, because we think you've been rude to us. Now, if mm -hmm. you don't see that that's a challenge, and obviously I can see from everything you've said before that you don't think so, uh, then I think, Chris, time, you know I think it's that. time you to know that's up. not true. No, no, you, you have invariably, invariably, in all our discussions, you said, to the extent that it's true, it's because people like me must have upset them. And I'm no, sorry, oh, I, I, you, well, anyone come can, on. well, I, I don't make just the assertion. I simply say to anyone watching this, re, replay, video, replay, okay. replay, replay, and see, replay and see. You've never attributed the cause of any of this to itself, to mm -hmm. its text, to its faith, to the preachments of the imams. It's invariably the outcome of some grievance that is inflicted upon them. No. This is, no, this, no, is a, this is a very, very, very dangerous parody of the real situation. Yeah. Now, no, the breachments of imams do matter, and it gets back to a point we, that came up in our previous discussion where uh, in, in your critique of my op-ed piece about Major Hassan, I said his perception of the war in Afghanistan uh, and Iraq had seemed to push him uh, toward a, a, or onto a slippery slope toward terrorism, whatever. I said, you said, no, he was pulled by this imam, yes. this radical imam. I agree, he was pulled, and my point is <clears throat> American foreign policy should not give the imam the rhetorical tools to effectively pull people. So I'm not denying the role of religious preachment, of religious scripture. I'm saying, uh, you know, there's a lot of unfortunate stuff out in the world, including some in those categories, And but I, I'm saying, uh, you know, to work with them intelligently, you cannot start with premises such as those that it is the subtitle of your book that religion poisons everything. It manifestly does not. 
We do not have to eradicate religion in order to save the world. The homicidal ravings of al-Alaki, the, the imam of Major Hassan, uh, are not the outcome of the attempt of secular democracy to defend itself. No, not, many things aren't. They are many not. bad things aren't. They are, they, are, they, are, they are their own responsibility, and the responsibility for it is his. Mm -hmm. And one day, I hope we'll catch up with him. Okay. Finally, before I you must then you You'll then be able to say when he goes on trial, poor guy, uh, he was driven to it uh, by, who will it be? Um, no, no. The editor, the editor of the Copenhagen paper, the, by Salman Rushdie, Chris by Ayan Hershey Ali, they all, they all just made his head buzz like a hive and forced him to uh, uh, tell uh, people to shoot, their, to shoot their medical colleagues, having taken a Hippocratic oath. Do you, I I mean, said, do you understand why, I've, why I'm sounding like this? I, I, find it, I, I find it hateful to think that you really did believe anything of what you just said. As I said in the previous dialogue, when I point to something that may indeed have, have uh, encouraged someone to do something bad, like the Iraq War encouraging this Major Hassan to kill people, I do not mean to in the least alleviate them from moral responsibility or assign blame in a moral sense to America. I'm trying to it's illuminate a, a the rhetoric, costs and benefits of policy. Them. I'm trying to illuminate the costs and benefits of policy. And as I said last time, until we get better uh, in defiance of right-wing propagandists at separating the question of blame from the question of impartial causal analysis about costs and benefits of alternative policies, we will be screwed. And uh, I'm not sure I have your support in that campaign. The, uh, uh, before I graciously give you the last word, I just want to say one thing. I was very relieved to hear you say earlier that your feeling is kind of live and let live. What people want to believe in the, in the, in the, in the privacy of their own churches, as long as they don't do any harm, is their business. I'm relieved to hear you say that. I'm a little surprised because I've got to say the tone that comes out of your writing is, is the following. You know, my view is that life is hard. It, 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 I really find it hard, and I, I think anyone who, who, who takes a stab at living a moral life is going to find it hard. I believe everyone who does that uh, winds up doing it on the basis of something they can't prove, something probably that is in some sense irrational, and often something that is in some sense a crutch. What I hear you saying, and maybe you've now corrected me, and I won't think you're saying that anymore, but what comes through in the tone of your writing is, well, I'm sorry, but... All of you are coping with this difficult challenge uh, uh, of life in a way that's just intellectually laughable. And if only you were as smart as I am, you wouldn't be resorting to this. And that, that seems to me not really a lit and let live, live, live policy. That, that, that seems to be a live and ridicule policy. And it really bothers me, the, the elitism and air of superiority in your writing. Well, <clears throat> I'll come to that in reverse order, if I may. The Religion makes very large claims for itself. In some cases, some cases it claims to be infallible or to have spokesmen who are. It also says, if you agree with us, we can offer you salvation. If you don't, we can promise you damnation. Um, these are very big claims. So they then want to say, by the way, you're not allowed to criticize or ridicule this either. I must say, I think that's asking a bit much, don't you? Now, then, if their fallback position is, oh, well, it makes people behave better, well, I think we've already discussed that. I say this. No proof that people wouldn't have behaved that well anyway, and there are many crimes specifically attributable to superstitious and supernatural belief. And then on the point of coexistence, which I do say in my book, um, uh, it's because they won't accept the offer. I mean, uh -huh. uh, I do have to hear uh, from a madrasa in Virginia, a very short way, just in where I'm sitting now, uh, uh, preachments. Uh, from a man who now chooses to live in Yemen for his own safety, having encouraged the 9-11 hijackers and Major Hassan. I am forced to listen to that. In Washington, just to stay where we are, uh, the Catholic Church has just said, if the city passes an ordinance about gay rights, it wants to withdraw from its charitable donations to the city. It won't be involved if it has to recognize this kind of thing. It makes it very clear, by the way, that their effort is a proselytizing one, not just a charitable one. Uh, American tax dollars are spent all the time on on aid to Israel, some part of which is used for the building of the establishment of a religion on the West Bank by Messianic uh, thieves who hope to bring on uh, the Messiah. And in, I, I can hardly open the newspaper without seeing another attempt to have government money spent on the teaching of, of pseudoscience in our schools. Now, if you want to coexist with me, 
have your religious beliefs. I don't care. I will continue to find them ridiculous and I'll continue to satirize them. I hope you can take it. If your God isn't strong enough to insulate you against my jokes, too bad. Tough. But don't try and have your beliefs taught to my children. Don't ask for my tax dollars to support your church. Uh, don't ask for my money to be spent on colonial settlements. And don't preach jihad in my neighborhood. Or, or threaten to send people from Pakistan and Saudi Arabia and elsewhere to kill friends of mine in London for the crime of writing a novel. Have I, have I begun to make myself play? They uh, won't well, leave me it... alone. So I am a member of a group that you scorn and, 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 and insult. And I don't call, scorn atheists. Call I do not scorn. No, you, you've written not nothing but scornful. Atheists. You've written scornful and insulting things about a group you call the new atheists as if we were the fundamentalists. True. I've, True. I've decided to become a member of a, a force of people who doesn't need all every time, five times a day to pray, doesn't need constant reinforcement, doesn't need to sing hymns saying what Jesus wants or anything, any nonsense of this kind. Just coolly decides there must be a pushback to theocracy and its propagandists and its actions. And it's long overdue in a defense of science and reason and humanism. And uh, to that proposition, I am, without I hope, sounding too sententious about it, willing to give the rest of my life. And you might ask me, why would I do that since I, I think I'm only a primate? And I say, well, some questions are undecidable. But um, in the meantime, I'm not willing to be told what to do by people who say that God gives them a right to push me around. I, well, won't, I, I, won't spend I, a, I won't spend a minute of my life I agree. that way. I agree that you should not. Um, and, and in keeping with my vow to let you have the last word, I will... Um, oh, well, I think that was it, wasn't it? What's that? Those words were the last, I think. Well, yeah. I thought you said we were already over time. We are over time. That's why I decided that those should be your last words. Oh, well, well good. I thought you said I had, could have some more. That would be... No, 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 no. That would oh, be greedy. You, if you want more, I have I, I have made a vow of silence, obviously, in, 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 in asserting that you would have the last word, so I can't say more. If you want to say more, go ahead. No, 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 really. I think you've been more than generous. Okay, well, you have more than I have because I know your services are very much in demand, yet you agreed to do this for free, a doubleheader taping, two consecutive hours of, of enduring me. I really appreciate it. It's always a pleasure and in some ways an illumination. And um, if you find anybody who will pay us to do this, let me know, okay? You bet. Okay. All right. Well, take, Thanks for take having care. me. Okay. Bye-bye.